YouTube, it is I, Sakarma, coming to you with a 1v1 action out of total bro hammer here. I, myself, am heading the Skaven with the ever-beautiful, uh, effervescent uh, Skrulk, and um, the equally beautiful <laughs> Throg is uh, ahead of Norska, and I'm against, uh, oh, I didn't see the name, but we'll get it afterwards. So this is a fun little battle that's uh, pretty quick, so I'll go over the composition right quick. Uh, as you can see, this is a douche-free Skaven build. That's right, no douche plane, no douche uh, furnaces, no douche wheels. Uh, I don't like those units. I think, I mean, maybe you can make the argument that the uh, the Doom Wheel is okay, but uh, play furnaces are gross. I hate them so much, and I think uh, Doom Wheels are very OP. So I like to bring Skaven Rush Armies. They're not very good. Generally, they generally fail. They lose pretty badly, but, you know, I like to try them out and again. Uh, so I brought a Warp Landing Cannon to help deal with large. Brought a couple of... Um, Halberd ears as well, so I'm Halberd ears to, you know, pretty much fulfill the same role as well. I brought a poison with globid ears again to deal with large. I was very afraid of large. One gutter with poison. I like to put these guys in the back line because they apply that slow effect and they do poison and everything. Um, where's the slow effect? Uh, snare net. Yeah, so, oh, that's strength in numbers. Where's snare net? Snare net. So, you know, it decreases speed. So I like to have them in the back line. I'll slow their whole, uh, the, the whole army down and pretty much allow us to uh, reposition if we need to. I've got a number of clan rat spears, you know put around here uh, on the corners it looks like one two three four I think yeah and then I've got uh, a couple of clan rats and then uh, slaves in the front and my leadership core is an Ashashin, a warlock engineer and a lord Skrulk. I brought Skrulk with uh, the summon um, what's it called this one pestilent birth vermintide uh, pestilent breath to deal with berserkers and then yeah that's it and then of course he's got um the warlock i've got the warlock engineer for his warp stone armor which has a draining effect kind of like a mortis engine it's a solid to have you know in the in the front line especially considering skaven usually kind of struggle in front line engagements prolonged front, front line engagements and of course the assassin here to uh, help uh, clean up any large units or single entity models i have to deal with my opponent meanwhile brought a very, an interesting list the one i didn't expect and i think it was actually a good idea uh, a lot of marauder champions so some marauders in the flank some berserkers I was expecting just a ton of Berserkers. I also brought a couple of Storm from a Sword and Board, I should mention, uh, to deal with Berserkers. Um, but instead of bringing a lot of Berserkers, he brought a lot of uh, Marauder Champions. Let's see, he got one, two, three Marauder Champions. So interesting choice. I didn't see that coming. He's got a couple of uh, Berserkers on the flank, a number of Marauders. So we're going to do well in this battle, especially considering they get buffed as the battle goes on. So as they chop through Skaven Slaves, it helps uh, fill their, their, their Bloodlust meter. And then before we know it, they are... Uh, an orgasmic fury and just slicing through rats left and right. So yeah, not a bad little uh, little move on my opponent's part. About a feral mammoth. Not sure about this guy. Um, I think they're like 1600. I guess just to muck up the front line. Uh, they do have a bonus for infantry, which you know most Skaven uh, Skaven is 99% infantry unless you bring uh, you know the douchebag uh, units or rat ogres, which are a very good unit. But uh, I was scared to bring rat ogres only because there's a lot of anti-large on Norska. Um, and I don't, I don't really see a place for them here. I mean, even Berserkers will probably do pretty well against uh, Rat Ogres due to their high weapon damage. So I was concerned about uh, Rat Ogres. I sort of left them at home. Uh, my opponent, meanwhile, has brought Throg, who again is uh, equally beautiful. Look at that beard and just all, all those teeth. Just what a, what a pretty blad. You know, truly, truly. Uh, what's on his stomach? Looks like he had like a, like a, like a, is that a mouth? Homie's got a mouth on his stomach? Jesus Christ. Talk about, uh, you know, eternal hunger. I don't know what the fuck that means, but... Oh, look at his toes. Jesus Christ. Okay, so Throg, we've, we've established, is a beautiful, beautiful little bastard. Uh, so let's get the battle started. So we're trying to shoot down this Feral Mammoth. I just thought it was the biggest hitbox. Figured uh, it would be the easiest to kill. Throg, I don't want to do any damage to him because he can heal it, so what's the point? Uh, my opponent here, I thought I was going to get lucky and he was going to bring him right in the range, but he's smart. He's just outside the Poison of Globideers. I probably should have moved these guys up to start getting some shots on, but I wanted to keep this line in formation. Uh, and meanwhile, I don't mind. I'm getting some laser beams on this Feral Mammoth. Uh, he, I can see he's pushing harder on this uh, flank, so I'm starting to reposition a lot of my troops. I do have a Stormbrim with Halberd to defend the laser beam, uh, which is going to be key as the battle goes on. But yeah, the vast majority of his troops are going to cut through mine. Um, I only have really four elite uh, infantry shoulders to hold out, uh, so they're kind of in trouble. The only, what I'm also hoping is that I have Libra Bubonicus and I have um, that other uh, Rod of Corruption. So between the two draining effects, hopefully those big uh, infantry blobs, we can you know hold out long enough that we can get some good uh, value out of that. So right away we get in there, uh, we go we go hard on Throg, we, we pop trophy heads, we pop rival high talisman, so he's at like 0 melee attack right now, he's at yeah, 5 melee defense, so we should be doing some serious damage. Of course he does have a good amount of, uh, he only has 55 armor, I thought he had more. So yeah, we're doing good damage, he does have a lot of health though. Um, these guys I have firing on him, I thought I had firing on him, but I don't know what happened there. Uh, they got kind of discombobulated and he pushes his uh, Marauder Champions on them, but I'm going to see that and try and get them out as fast as possible. Good thing about these guys is they do have heavy armor, 100, 100 armor, which is pretty solid, makes them pretty survivable. 
On this flank, we're holding with the Stormbreaker and Halberds. They'll clean up those Marauders pretty easily. Plant with Spears by Marauders. Trading okay, actually. Uh, impressively. I didn't expect them to do so well. Of course, these guys are being drained by these uh, this leadership core. And look how much damage we put on Throg. I mean, he, of course, you can heal it all up, but still, that's a good good bit of damage with those uh, abilities going down. Problem is, once he gets a hand, a hand on um, Thro uh, Lord Skrulk, he's going to put Lord Skrulk in the ground. And it's... It really, not a whole lot I can do about that. Uh, I am trying to push or pull my uh, skirmishers back. Of course, a lot of my units are rallying on the edge of the map, as you know, as Gaven are known to do. But they are breaking through. Pretty much every flank uh, is falling. The only flank that's holding really is the right flank. Um, I have pushed these guys into the battle. As you can see, see we looked away for one second, and Skrull's already down. Ooh, half damage. He gets smoked by a couple of skin wolves with armor there, uh, and they're just going at him. Skin wolves with armor. I forgot to mention in the battle they were here. I summon up a plague monk to deal with these uh, marauder berserkers on the right flank. Hopefully, do some damage, and then I summon up a clan rats to try and put some damage on these marauder hunters with javelins. Uh, we are just trying to kill Sk um, Throg, but stats are quite high, 55 and 50. This guy only has 60, and he doesn't have armor piercing, so it's not the best battle. But we are going to try and hunt him down. I do, you know, the leadership core is doing the training effect, so that is solid. And of course, we do have the Stormbreaker with Halbert over here, although they are fighting Marauder champions. But still, they're, I'm aggressively passing them to try and get into these large units to this nice, nice, uh, to a battle that much more favor them. On the left flank, totally collapse. Uh, everything's dead. Uh, all my man, all my clan rats are done, are gone. The good thing is his Feral Mammoth is rampaging, and that is solid for us. I do have the, and um, both my skirmish units are pretty, are in pretty decent health. And then, of course, I start uh, reactivating a lot of my units that have uh, fled in the back. Um, in this circle, uh, it's not looking good. We are heavily surrounded. We really just have this this infantry core, or sorry, this leadership core. That's all I've got. But the draining effect you can see is pretty substantial. Just uh, you know, ticking down about seven health, or you know, anywhere from seven to eleven health per per second. So that's doing good job for us. And we have, of course, Libra Bonicus. We're gonna pop any second we get. Um, yeah, and I mean, they do a fight or die there. Throg is uh, uh, he is trophy headed again though, so he's not gonna be doing too 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 well. Really? How does he have that much? Oh, because he had uh, standard die. Jesus, so he's just still a 29 melee attack, which isn't terrible. I think Skrulk is pretty low at 45. He's not terrible either himself, but, you know, Throg is doing some good, good damage on Skrulk. And if I lose Skrulk, I still have another caster, so I still have some magic I can use. I did bring um, the lightning, uh, warp lightning from the sky, whatever it's called, Crack's Call or whatever. I think that's what it's called. doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah, if we lose Skrulk, it's bad news. The good thing is we do get Throg hit with an assassin hit, and then we get Lord Skrulk on him, and he is going to flee. And these guys are also putting some damage into the Skin Wolves, sending them back home. Uh, meanwhile, on the left flank, they are pushing hard, but uh, that's huge. The infantry core win was a big fight, and you can see these guys are just getting smoked uh, from the draining effects. The holding of the storm room, uh, storm, uh, storm room with Halberds and the draining effects of both the Warlock Engineer and Skrulk are just doing wonders. Of course, he does not have a, he does not have a um, passive draining effect. He has the Lieber... Uh, or he has the Rod of Corruption, which is, you know, has to be popped. But still, it's doing good jobs, doing good work. We're killing everything. Uh, his Metal Caster over here is trying to, you know, s s recover the fight over here as best he can by casting spells. But uh, it's not looking great for my opponent. Uh, he's won the left flank, but uh, we've won everywhere else. And we push back pretty much all his infantry, surprisingly. I didn't. It looks so bad at the beginning of the battle. I don't know how it sort of came out here, but we are shooting down uh, Throg. He has, a you know, 104 health, 1 health left. Are you kidding me? Five health, but he did get oh he did get nailed and oh he does die. So I don't know how that happened. He did say he had five health. I don't know how that works. But anyways, yeah. Uh, once he falls, basically the rest of the army shatters and it's a uh, GG and it's going to be a victory for the Skaven. So yeah, fun little Skaven build. Um, I have never played this matchup before. It's the first time I played this matchup and I think it'll be an interesting one. Uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, Norsk has a lot of options against uh, units or factions rather that don't have a lot of armor. Um, because they can bring Marauder Champions, they can bring Berserkers, they can go heavy on monsters, they can go really, really wide and bring a lot of skirmishing. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of interesting things that uh, Norska can do, so a fun little battle. Um, I think it'll be a fun matchup between Skaven and Norska, so long as Skaven doesn't go total douche furnace all the time. Because if I had brought, you know, a douche, the double douche furnace uh, douche wheel build, it would have been very difficult for my opponent to counter. I mean, he has the Mammoth, but that's not great. Um, Throg will do well. But uh, he's going to get knocked around, and of course, their stupid wonky animations makes them difficult to hit. And of course, Berserkers will just get murdered by douche furnaces and douche wheels. You probably have to bring Famir uh, with great weapons if, you, if you're expecting a douche furnace build. But yeah, uh, GG to my opponents are Arthur Dane. I uh, hope he's a reader of the books. I love those books. And the show's pretty good, too. Although, I was watching clips of Season 7, and my god, does Season 7 fucking suck. Oh, shit, that is it. They just did such a, such a poor job uh, in, the, in the latest season. It's so silly. Everything's ridiculous. I mean, you have these crazy, you know, ridiculous lightsaber duels. Might as well be lightsaber duels from, like, the uh, the new trilogy where they're doing, like, backflips and nonsensical spinnies and ridiculous, non you know, uh, pirouettes when they're fighting with swords. It's supposed to be kind of, like, gritty and realistic, and meanwhile, they're doing all this nutso stuff, you know, putting the sword through the legs as they slash guys throw it open. A little ridiculous. Ugh, I don't know. 
Game of Thrones, my God, they really fucked up last season. But ho- here's hoping for redemption in next season. And uh, with that note, I'll see you guys around the bend. <laughs>